Hi everyone, this is Bailey with the Cobbish Memorial Public Library, here to bring to you our first teen craft, a hedgehog made out of a book. Kits for this project are available in the teen department on level 4 while supplies last. Before I get into my tutorial, I just wanted to give a quick reminder that registration for summer reading has only just begun, and you can actually sign up one of three ways. The first is in person, where you fill out a physical form at the library. The second and third ways are digital, where you can keep track of your tickets virtually. You can either use the Beanstack Tracker app, where you search for Coppish Memorial Public Library to get started, or you can go to the Beanstack website at bostoria.beanstack.org. If you want more information on how to sign up using the Beanstack app or website, I'll leave a helpful link down below that will lead you to a step-by-step -step handout that goes into more detail. Now, without further ado, on to the craft. To make this hedgehog, I'm predominantly following instructions from DIY and crafts. I'll leave the original link to her instructions down below in case you want to check them out. You'll notice that in this craft kit, you're getting instructions, a discarded library book, googly eyes, a puff ball, and a strip of felt. The first thing you want to do is remove the cover from the book so that only the block of pages is left. I found that a pair of scissors or an X-Acto knife will work just fine to separate the pages from the spine. Or you may even just be able to rip the pages from the spine if the book's weak enough. This process has already been started for you on a number of the books in your kits. Once the text block is by itself, tear at least 10 pages or more from the front or back of the block and set them aside for later. Next, begin folding your pages one at a time. Your first fold will go down and inward at an angle so that it looks like you have a triangle moving in toward the binding. Your second fold will be another inward one that folds the remaining portion of the page vertically, up and down, toward the binding. Finally, you'll take the bottom outer corner of the page and fold it in another, but smaller, triangle. You'll notice that the two angled folds are different sizes. The lengthier, pointier one is the face portion of the hedgehog, while the shorter one is the back end. You'll continue folding every page like this until you like the size of your hedgehog. It's important to note that you don't have to fold every page of your book, especially if it's a larger one. Instead, you fold as many as you see fit. Some tutorials note that using 180 pages when folding is enough to make a full hedgehog. As you can see, I'm not folding all of my pages. Instead, I'm only using a portion of them and slicing up the excess pages with my X-Acto knife. Now, I'm going to add spikes to the hedgehog. For this, I'm returning to those pages I removed from the back of the book at the beginning of this project, and I'm cutting them in half horizontally. You can fold them before cutting to make it for even page sizes, or you can guesstimate your cutting. How many pages you'll need will all depend on how many pages you ended up folding. After you have the halves of your pages, you can cut in a zigzag pattern so that you create spikes.
Next, place them between the pages of your hedgehog. I'm placing a single piece of spiked paper every four pages, but you can space yours however you like. If your paper feels loose amongst the pages, you can glue them in place. However, mine fits snugly, so I'm just sliding them in. Finally, the last steps are to accessorize by gluing the eyes and nose in place on the pointed end of the hedgehog and making what I want out of the provided felt. With my felt, I'm making front feet and ears in a diamond shape, gluing those in place. You can also make hats or bows for your hedgehog if you'd like, or you can paint them. How you decorate is pretty limitless. You can even decorate beneath so that they're sitting on something like a bed of leaves. If you end up completing this craft, feel free to send or take us some pictures of your final projects. We'd love to see what you come up with.